Let's have a look at another feature of Redux, middleware. This is the flow diagram you already know. The application dispatches actions, actions are handled by reducers, the reducers return a new state, the state is stored in the store, and the store then passes this back to our application. Now we haven't hooked up React.js to Redux yet, but we'll do so soon, but the flow is true no matter if we use React or anything like that, or nothing like we're doing now. Now middleware allows us to hook into this process, specifically here, once action is dispatched right before reaching the reducer, and then executing some code, for example, logging this action and the upcoming state change or anything like that. So let's see this in action and let's see why this might be useful, though you will see other uses of middleware throughout this well, course or throughout the next videos too. In order to use middleware, I will go up to my imports and I'll use or import another method which is called apply middleware, also from the Redux package. This allows me to apply some middleware into my Redux flow, as you saw it on the diagram right before. This middleware is set up here in my store or in the create store method. The first argument here creates the or sets up the reducer, or reducers in this case. Then we pass the initial state, an empty JavaScript object here, as will be overwritten by the reducers which have their own initial state. And then the apply middleware method here. Now the apply middleware method here takes an argument and this argument is the middleware we want to use. Currently I don't have such a middleware. So let's create a new one. Let's create it right above the store. I'll name it my logger. So it's a middleware which should log something. And middleware has this pattern or is created in this way. It's a couple of fat arrow functions chained together. So we have the store which is passed into a method which actually returns us a method which takes the next method provided by Redux here and then we have this return another method call which takes the action which then finally has a function body as we know it which well, allows us to do whatever we want to do. For example, say locked action, action, and then execute next action. This next call here is important because next is a method provided by Redux package. And if we don't call next, well, then our action is not traveling any further. It's not reaching the reducer, it's canceled we're failing, store or state is not updated. So therefore calling next is important. But I could imagine that this syntax here is a bit strange. It's certainly strange looking. In the end, it's just a couple of fat arrow functions as ES6 introduced them. And you can think of it like this. The first function here, which gets executed, by the way, my logger here, yeah, is just this function here. So store is the argument. This is the function body of this function taking store as an input. Now in this function body, we simply return another fat arrow function, which takes the next variable or as we learn method here as an input. Now the next method or function here is a function automatically passed by Redux. That's why this pattern here is so important. Redux expects this pattern. It wants to pass the next method here. And this fat arrow function, which gets this next action here or function here as an input, then returns us yet another fat arrow function, which takes the action which was executed and which then finally has a function body as we know it where we can write our own code and then use any of the free arguments we pass down this chain. And that's why I use the federal functions here because that's the convenient way. I can use any of the arguments here in the final function which is this one. So while it might look strange, 
just keep this pattern in mind and in the end you'll probably not write your own middleware that often but there are some useful third-party middlewares which you might want to hook in at any point in your application. So with the mylogger middleware created I'm passing it here in the apply middleware method I'm calling mylogger and I'm not executing it just passing a reference here. If I save this go back to the application and reload it now we see a whole bunch of things being locked to the console and the store updated well that's just the code here in the subscription whenever the store changes but the locked action text that's the one from our middleware as you can see it always appears right before we get store updated which makes sense because as you saw on the slide the middleware is executed before the store is changed and before the state is changed so the locked action here simply is doing the following it prints the action we're about to execute so here add with a payload of 100 and indeed we can see the store got updated where we have now a result of 101 and this error array value of 100 was added and then here for set h for example we see that the user reducer indeed changed the age here to 30. so that is how we can create our own middleware and use it Nice to know, might be helpful, but as I just said, you'll probably use apply middleware more often in the context that you want to use some third party middleware. So let's add one. And actually a useful one is the Redux logger, which gives us a nicer logger than the one I'm using here. So I'll go down to the console and npm install Redux logger. Minus minus save here. And I'll just split this over multiple lines here so that it's all a bit easier to read. So the logger was installed and I can now go to the top here at my import and import logger from Redux logger. I'm not using the curly braces here because logger or the Redux logger package here has a default export which I then import like this. Again, ES6 stuff. Have a look at my video or course if you want to learn more about this. So I want to use this logger too. And I can use multiple middlewares by simply chaining them. Here I add logger, though here I need to execute it. Why do I need to execute logger, the one I just imported and not my logger? Well, that's just how this package, Redux logger here, is set up. Logger, which I import here, is a function I actually need to execute to get again this middleware chain here. Could be different, but it isn't, so we have to do it like this. Save this, reload, and now it's getting crowded here, huh? Not really better to see, but what you can see is that the logger here gives us a much nicer view of the previous state, the action which gets executed, and then the next state. So if I remove my logger here to make it a bit more readable and maybe comment out this store updated thing, if I save this and reload, now it's much easier to read. Don't expand this. Now, as you can see, we get a clear view of which actions get dispatched, what the state is before this action is dispatched. So here, when we add 22, we get the old state where the result is 101. And then we get the new state where the result is 123. And that's a nice logger for development purposes mainly, of course. Probably not something you'll use in your deployment or in your production app which you want to deploy. But that is how you use middleware, how it can be useful, and you will see another very useful thing you can do with middleware in one of the next videos when we actually have a look at asynchronous tasks, asynchronous actions, for example, reaching out to a server. But I'm not going to spoil the fun, we'll see it when we're there. So let's instead continue to the next video and finally, finally hook up Redux and React.